with the de design of an organic farming system that's going to be functional in a way that's regenerative to the landscape and sustainable within that landscape, you want to design it in a way that um, blends with the natural patterns that help shape similar landscapes. So what we're doing with this is, is looking at how in a similar natural landscape, um, what are, the, what are the patterns that those landscapes uh, demonstrate in response to some of the um, forces that, that shape that landscape? So, um, some, some of the different patterns or forces that um, commonly shape a landscape, one is time, so um, any ecosystem changes over time. It's in a dynamic state of, of uh, different communities of, of plants and animals, um, succeeding each other um, as, and as it develops in maturity and stability it tends to uh, stabilize as, as an old um, old growth forest or, or some other type of stable ecosystem but even that is in some state of dynamic uh, shift as things like fires or other disturbances can move it back to an earlier su successional stage and it will mature back to its late successional stage too. So being aware within the particular uh, agricultural system that you've developed, at what stage of, of successional development is it? Because in a New Zealand type climate, uh, most of this agricultural systems will set up will mature towards an old, old growth forest. So at what stage of development towards that old growth forest is that agricultural system at? and what species are going to predictably invade that system in a way to help mature that system towards that old growth forest. And once you're aware of that process, you can help manage that succession and introduce um, elements of disturbance into that system to maintain it at a certain level of development that you want um, to be able to uh, acquire that, that level of production that you're after. Um, the other one is an uh, area to do with, uh, it's called zonation, so it's just within any ecosystem there is distinct edges on, on the outside of that ecosystem or um, in the middle of the ecosystem and it depends upon the interaction between different types of um, ecosystems or, or, or the impact of different environmental factors upon that ecosystem. So for example in, in an ocean as the ocean gets shallower and it meets the land, you've got two types of ecosystem there, the, the ocean and the land ecosystem, and you've got different environmental factors as well. And in a similar way in a forest, you've got this sheltered, protected, um, quite dim environment within the heart of the forest, and there'd be different species that have adapted to that particular environment. And then as you move out towards the edge of the forest, towards the grassland habitat, it's more open, um, it's more exposed to the elements and there's going to be a different set of organisms that um, best suit that type of habitat. So within the design of your system you can select species that are most suitable to different positions within that ecosystem and, and, and select, uh, select the species accordingly. So you might have your bigger nut and fruit trees more in the middle of your planting and the smaller brambles and bushes and shrubs on the outside of the planting in a way that replicates that, that diversity and spread of species um, within a, a natural ecosystem. Um, another one is height. So um, in an ecosystem, again with plants, you, you tend to get a, a variation in, in the height of plants. So you've got your uh, canopy trees that tower, tower above the other trees and then your sub-canopy trees that form a smaller canopy below that, particularly on, on the edges of forests. And then your, your shrubs and ground covers, and you might have vines, and you might have epiphyte plants that are perched up in the trees. Um, 